many families in Singapore that have been stuck here and we've all been trying to do the right thing over the past two years. And But, uh, you know, at a certain point, we all have to see our family. We're going to awesome. talk now with Terence Zhou, the CEO and founder of Ride On Board, which I believe is a carpooling service. Terence, welcome to the show, my friend. Hi, good morning, Neil. Good morning, Glenn. Good, we can hear morning, you now. Morning, Terence. Now, tell us, I believe your app, your, your subscription-based service, uh, Ride Plus, it offers affordable rides at, at better value in what is, let's be honest, a very competitive market already. So tell us about Ride. How did it evolve? How did it start? And how is your, you know, your carpooling service original, different to the others on the market? Yeah, uh, we started in uh, uh, as a founded company in 2014, but by 2005, we were the first uh, to launch uh, a carpooling app service here in Singapore. Coupling is not new. I mean, it has been encouraged strongly by even the Singapore government and many governments throughout the world. But, you know, we brought it online, you know, started uh, at, in 2015, and it started to grow uh, from there. And in the early days were hard. We had to go around uh, to get drivers to sign up. Uh, but what it did was to offer people a cheaper and more convenient point-to-point -point option where they could, uh, you know, fill up empty cars. You know, every car on the road, right, the average occupancy is about 1.2. So we thought that it was a, be a good idea if we can help fill up those empty seats, uh, help people save a little bit of money, uh, reduce the carbon footprint, and uh, help uh, drivers amortize their, uh, their driving cost. Then it's a win-win solution. So that's how we sort of mm. got things started. And then, uh, you know, it's been, uh, you know, uh, close to uh, six years since we uh, we launched the service and uh, today you know there are many many people who use uh, carpooling uh, to get from A to B in a very cost efficient and green way. Absolutely. Yeah, we're talking with Terence Joe, the CEO and founder of Ride On Board. And Terence, if I can just say, you have got the most amazing radio voice I have ever heard. In fact, if you ever want to come on uh, and just talk to us on the radio, I think all of us would love to, love to hear that uh, those golden tones of yours. Um, but let me move on to a question, and that is, you know, the, the ride, ride sharing has been, uh, some of things going on in, in the U.S. and other places for, as you mentioned, a number of years and a number of years here. How has it changed, though, during the pandemic? Are people more conscious of you know not wanting to share a ride with somebody that's not a family member etc how has that been going for ride and what kind of adjustments have you had to make mm -hmm. for that yeah and just want to the backtrack of it so we we started uh, just to clarify we started with carpooling and in 2018 we moved over into the ride hailing where we, and taxis where now we have private hire cars and taxis mm -hmm. and basically the full suite of services on board I see. And back to your question on the pandemic and how it has panned out for the general ride hailing uh, industry. Um, obviously, the uh, total number of trips on the industry wide has uh, shrunk uh, due to the pandemic and the restrictions in uh, mobility and, and movement. Uh, but for us, we have seen um, uh, healthy healthy growth because um, uh, we offer drivers a lower commission, you know, as opposed to. Uh, the, uh, the the competition and during the pandemic you're right to say that uh, the, the habits have changed I mean some people on one hand uh, are not uh, going to work uh, in the CBD so the geographical and then temporal demand patterns have shifted right they're, they're more localized right. they go to the supermarket and back so in terms of demand uh, and the temporal demand for right healing is sort of shifted a little bit and also, on the other hand, uh, some people also, um, due to the pandemic, uh, they rely more on uh, digital services and are more comfortable with a point-to-point -point transportation rather than going on to public transportation you know, where it's a little bit more crowded. So we, we see some changes right. in patterns and new people who you know, uh, uh, come on board uh, to use our carpooling services because it's slightly cheaper and can offer them point-to-point uh, -point and more effective uh, uh, transportation. Terence, yeah. how has the the carpooling, the car hailing service changed and evolved? You mentioned there that there has been some shifts. I mean, do you mm. see a difference in terms of demographic, gender? Are males more comfortable sharing than females, for example? You know, female mm. to male, mm. male to female, whatever. Mm. What sort of demographics and shifts and changes mm. have you seen in those sort of five or six years? 
Yeah, so start, I mean, it's a great question. So at the start, you know, people were wondering, actually, do, you know, the females are a bit more, um, more conscious of the safety issues, you know, of carpooling or ride hailing in general. As it turned out, right, the, the, the very interesting fact is actually females are our majority of our users of uh, uh, ride hailing services, carpooling and private hire services uh, inclusive. I think uh, you know, and they are, uh, and generally the on the demographic side, they tend to be slightly younger. They are more technologically uh, savvy. Uh, you know, they, they they want convenience. You know, the, the new generation they just want convenience at the click of the button. They don't know want to stand by the roadside to hail uh, you know a taxi or a car. And I think uh, back to my point on the the female, um, the um, being a very they're close to 65% uh, of our users are actually uh, females who demand the service. I think for various reasons. Maybe uh, they're they a bit more uh, conscious of their time. Maybe they're, you know, they, they just want the comfort for get from A to B without squeezing on the on the trains in the morning. <laughs> Maybe their dresses yeah. you know, you know, will not get uh, you know, uh, too ruffled on the way to work. And also, um, it's just it's simply uh, convenient without having to walk uh, the last mile or the first mile. Yeah, Russell. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your business model. How how does Ride make its money? Is it is it a commission structure off of each ride? Uh, w what does that look like uh, in an era where margins are are getting slimmer and slimmer, and and people are uh, constantly watching their budgets and and, and very uh, cost conscious? Yeah. So what we do, uh, we don't own any fleets. Uh, you know, we don't have any inventory. So we're a purely one hundred percent platform play. So we match passengers uh, with drivers and what we do is to keep our cost low you know we are very conscious of marketing uh, subsidies and, and incentives so we, we try to keep everything low and our team lean as well and, and focused so in that way we can offer lower commissions to our drivers so for all drivers out there you know who are listening to the show uh, you know we offer 10 percent uh, uh, commission uh, as opposed to the market rate of 20 to 25 percent, so I think that's uh, that's uh, value for the uh, the drivers. At the same time, because of that, we are able to charge slightly lower fares to the passengers. So, so it's a win-win for everyone, and and so th so that's uh, one way we we build our business in a more sustainable uh, manner. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Wouldn't the, when the drivers ever ha rather have a 25% commission, though? I, I mean, I think I might. <laughs> Versus a 10%. Yeah. Yeah. But that so does help keep the cost down, is that your point? Yeah, because, you know, as you said, uh, the margins are pretty thin. You know, you have to rent a car, you have to pay for patrol, you pay for the road tax. So at the end of the day, you know, a 10% differential in commission is uh, on a daily and every trip basis adds up to a, uh, a huge amount at the end of the month, right, into the hundreds of dollars. And mm -hmm. that's how, you know, we intend uh, to maintain a low-cost uh, platform to create more value for both the drivers and passengers. Yeah. Terence, moving forward, at the government level, business level, and even, you know, residential level, if you like, there is a collective concerted effort now to reduce our carbon footprints, mm -hmm. carpooling services, car hailing services, mm -hmm. they are increasing. You know, how do you see this industry moving forward? It is a competitive industry, as we've mentioned already. What is the future for the ride hailing industry in Singapore? Yeah, I think the future, uh, uh, you know, there are in Singapore uh, close to 7 million trips on a daily basis. I mean, this wow. is pre-pandemic numbers. I mean, people walking, taking the bus, taking the MRT, taking the train, taking a taxi, and right hailing services before the pandemic, right, on a, on a sustainable, uh, on a natural rate, was about uh, one million trips a day. So I think that, you know, post-pandemic, with the digitization, with people more technologically savvy, and they demand um, faster and more effective services, I think there's room to grow. Uh, for the for the right healing services and the demographic we see you know is also slightly younger as more uh, uh, younger students uh, young adults you know coming out of work 
you know, they want uh, they want a more affordable option to commute from uh, A to B. And then, of course, with the post-pandemic, we hopefully just now. I heard your conversation about the Omicron and and stuff. Now this will pass, hopefully pass sooner rather than later. And then you know the, when the economy bounces back, you know there's activity, you know right healing. Uh, you know the 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 future at least uh, from our perspective is sanguine. And obviously we are not going to stay there on on just focusing on the right healing. For us, we are also moving on onto uh, deliveries, uh, point to point deliveries, uh, mm. on demand deliveries same day. And we will be launching a series of other uh, features and, and uh, services uh, down the road. And this leverages on our uh, uh, knowledge that we have built up on the right hailing space. Basically, we are moving people from A to B. And then we use that to move goods and, uh, mm-hmm. and small parcels from uh, A to B as well. Yeah, very interesting. Terrace Joe is with us, uh, CEO and founder of Ride on Board. And Terrace, uh, Ride Education uh, is uh, is one of your, I believe, CSR uh, outreach uh, programs. You have something called the Merit Awards that you're doing. First of all, tell us about what is Ride Education and what are these uh, Merit Awards that you've been giving? Yeah, so we know that uh, this motivation comes uh, you know, from because we have recognized that drivers, you know, they, they drive daily, you know, and then they take home a daily income. They spend very little time with their, you know, lesser time with their, 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 their children. So we thought that it would be a great idea to recognize and provide some motivation for driver partners' children who are performing well in school. So that's how we, we conceive the Right Education Merit Awards. So we reach out to uh, outstanding students of our driver partners, right? And then uh, through a series of interviews and the selection process, select uh, uh, a few candidates and then we gave them uh, the Merit Awards, right? So, uh, you know, because I'm personally myself, I was a recipient of a scholarship before. So I understand that, you know, what, uh, you know, what early motivation, you know, at least a target for, for children, right? especially yeah. driver partner or taxi driver children can do uh, to motivate them. And even other people who, are, who, who, who witness them getting their award, right, they'll be motivated as well. So I think that's a what little is the, bit. What does the scholarship give them? What do, what do they get for that? So they have some, um, uh, we give them some uh, um, a computer peripherals, right, a laptop, and then we give some cash. Uh, so that they can uh, go and uh, purchase whatever that they want, uh, help them in the education. So we calculated roughly it's about a year's worth of uh, you know educational additional expenses uh, to help well, them in their journey along. Well, yeah. it's uh, the Merit Awards and your importance emphasis on welfare is a wonderful initiative. I mean, thanks for joining us today, Terence Cho, the CEO and founder of Ride On Board. If you can, Terence, after this. Please put in whatever links you can in our Money FM Facebook Live page to Ride so our listeners and viewers can find out more about it. That's Ride On Board, Singapore's subscription-based service for carpooling. Terence Cho, CEO, thank you very much for joining thank us you, today. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Glenn. Have a good day. Thanks, Terence.